Hello, this is Mike Berg from WeHard Games, and this screencast is going to be about using the vector shapes in Photoshop. So, uh, what is a vector graphic? It's actually a series of points that describe a shape rather than a grid of pixels. So, if we draw a vector shape, here I'll just draw a very small circle. We can zoom in. You can see that Photoshop does still render this out as pixels, but if we zoom back out and scale this circle up double click to accept that's a command T to transform uh, if we zoom in on these edges we still have a nice nice clean edge it's not pixelated or anything like that um, so creating vector shapes is as simple as choosing one from here there's rectangles rounded rectangles ellipses polygons uh, and custom shapes there are a bunch of custom shapes that you can choose from this menu and you can download more from the internet there's lots of places to get them for free so another thing I want to talk about is how to edit your shapes after you've created them one of the tools is a rounded rectangle tool which is often used and I'm just gonna give this a nice big radius so that we can see the rounding on the edges you have to be careful with resizing a rounded rectangle because if you transform this and you shrink it down like that, you've lost your your nice round edges. Uh, they get squashed. So the way you need to do that is actually to use the selection tool. And so the path selection tool lets you choose paths. The black arrow lets you choose the entire path. Uh, if you click and hold on here and grab the white arrow tool, it lets you choose specific points. And so I can actually click on a point and drag it and, and move these all around and distort the path. If you want to resize this, you need to select all of the points on the top and just drag them down while holding the shift key to keep it constrained. And if you want to resize it inwards, select the ones on the right and move them that way. And you can also edit these points um, by dragging on the handles. There's a handle on um, a curve point. So there's two kinds of points in a, in a vector shape. That's uh, curve points and just straight points and when you are creating a path with the pen tool for example you can click once to create a straight point and that gives you sort of like a polygon but if you click and drag it creates these curve handles uh, bezier handles they call them and then you can click on the last point to close your shape you can convert a point from a curved handle to a straight handle uh, sorry right here using the convert point tool and if you click on just click once on a curved handle it'll snap to a to a straight one and if you click and drag on a straight one you can convert it to a curved handle and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this I'm gonna change this box, this rounded box, so that it's only rounded on two sides. So if you were going to make a tab or something like that, you want to delete the anchor points on this path. And the reason that you want to use this tool, the delete anchor point tool, rather than just using the white arrow tool and clicking on it and pressing delete, is that you've actually now lost the path from here to here. This is an opening. And that may or may not matter uh, in most cases but I like to have a solid path all the way through. If you ever needed to add a point again in this space, you would need to draw the line first and then add a point in the middle, for example. Uh, so it's better to use this delete anchor point tool and click on this anchor point, and then it actually keeps the path together from here to here. I'm going to delete that anchor point as well. And then what I can do is use the convert point tool and click on these two corner pieces and that'll give me a nice straight edge. So that's a little bit about moving and editing the points. Uh, clicking on this part of the layer palette over here turns off the, the path preview. Sometimes the path kind of gets in the way, I find. Um, and clicking here uh, lets you select the path and edit it, but if you want to hide that path then you can just click on the layer palette over here. That gets rid of that. Now, one of the great things about using paths in Photoshop is you can actually use Boolean operations 
when you're dealing with 2D or 3D art, Booleans let you add or subtract shapes from another shape. So if you've got a couple of shapes, say I've got a big circle, uh, and I want to cut a hole in this circle so that it's transparent here. I'll hide the background so we can see what's transparent here. Um, there's Boolean operators up here. This adds to the shape, this subtracts, this is an intersect, and an exclude. Um, so I'm going to use the subtract, and then I'm just going to draw another circle. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to draw some, some grid lines here. If you hold down the shift key uh, while you're creating a grid, it snaps it to the nearest pixel or to the nearest uh, two or three pixels, depending on how far you're zoomed in. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a circle, and I'm holding down Option and Shift. If I release Option, it goes down to this side. If I release Shift, it gives me an ellipse instead of a circle. So Option and Shift gives you a circle that is centered on that point. And I'm going to create a subtraction here and just do another circle. And so that gives me a transparent shape. And now I can actually manipulate these individually if I use the black arrow tool, the black path selection tool, I can move this around and I can actually transform, if you press command T you can transform individual paths that you have selected with the black arrow tool which is very handy. And so now say I wanted to add a little bit more to this shape, I'll add a, circ or a square and see now I have selected this to be a subtraction as well but I don't want that to be a subtraction I want this to add to the shape and so what I can do is actually select this shape and change it up here and it changes to, a, to an add so if you ever mistakenly draw something and you want to change it uh, from an add to a subtract you can very easily switch them back and forth I'm just gonna make a little compass sort of looking thing here. And the other great thing about these is that this is now all on one layer. These are not individual layers. They are different paths on the same layer. And so if I were to apply um, a layer effect to this, it actually does get applied to the entire thing as if it was all one shape. So there you can see the difference of seeing it with the paths turned on and with them turned off. And so if I were to add even more to this, oh, it's not what I wanted. And see now what's happened, I've drawn another shape but it's actually put it on a separate layer. And I don't really want that. I want that to all be part of the same shape so that my layer effects all apply to the same thing and the coloring is all applied to the same, all to the same paths. And so I can actually use the black arrow tool, select this path, hit copy, command C, turn this off, select the path over here, and hit paste. And it actually pastes it into that same layer so that it's all part of the same path. And I can do that within the same layer as well. So if I want a, a copy of this circle, I can hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And it doesn't look like it's done anything. But when I go to transform Command T, I've got another another path here. And again, I can go up here and change this to be a subtract. And I've got kind of a cool little shape here. So yes, you can copy and paste paths from one layer to another, but also you can copy and paste paths inside the same layer so that it all maintains uh, a single layer shape, which can have layer effects applied to it very nicely. And that's a quick overview of some vector shapes. I hope that helps. If you resize any of these graphics up or down, they will maintain their perfect quality, and we all know how helpful that can be when Apple releases new devices and we have to upsize our graphics again. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or follow me on Twitter at WeHeartGames. 
and I'll see you next week.